Hey everybody, my name is Pete Eirig. I'm a teaching pastor and elder at Island Community Church, and I wanted to contribute my two cents to a midday connection. Um, it's been a crazy time, obviously, that we're living through, and uh, I pray that that God has uh, given you some sense of peace and and hope, as uh, as only He can through His Scripture and, and His Son. Well, one of the things that has been I've been thinking about through this is um, is the the amount of people who have been in uh, leadership positions in churches and ministries that all of a sudden are leading their organizations in a time where they never could have imagined the, the challenges and the, and the fear and the anxieties, um, you know. So I'm I'm privileged to see people like like Trevor and Tony and others, and I'm, I'm a, an executive coach for uh, Christian leaders. So I, I there's probably half a dozen. Christian leaders around the country I'm in regular contact with and, and helping them think through things. And one thing I can, I can note about these leaders is not a single one of them ever aspired to where they are in leadership. They've always been ones that are tapped on the shoulder and said, Hey, you know, we'd like you to consider being a senior pastor or consider being a vice president of this charity or something. And so it's very humbling for them. It's very daunting. And now, of course, they find themselves uh, trying to manage through this very, very difficult time for any nonprofit and, and, and for any church, uh, great need and uh, limited resources. And the, the scripture that has come to my mind and, and really leapt to me is in Isaiah, in Isaiah 6. And the, the setup is Isaiah is having a vision and uh, he sees God in his, with his heavenly court and he doesn't feel like he should be there. And, and God's seraphims, you know, um, put a cold to his lip and say, hey, you, you can be here. You can, you can do this. And then at one point, um, he hears God say, he says, then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. So Isaiah is saying, send me. I'm here. And that just struck, strikes me as the same situation that many of these uh, church and charity leaders are in. It's like, all right, I, send me. I, I will go, God. I, it, I will be faithful. I will do this, even if I'm scared to do it, even if I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Just send me. And the same applies to all the missionaries uh, around the world. They stood up and they said, send me. Someone has to go, send me. And I personally think I'm seeing this in our church and all the churches around that, that people are saying in my own way, God send me. If there's pain, if there's need, if there's comfort to be, to be given, God, I'll do it. Send me. I am here. And I think that's what the church is obviously called to be. We are, we are, we belong to God. We belong to Jesus Christ. He works through us. Send me. And that send me might not be a physical send me. Obviously, it's difficult to do that in, in our lockdown mode here and social distancing. But uh, one thing I would like to challenge everybody and, and something that I tried to start doing this week, it's going to be so easy for us to be locked down in our houses and just be with our loved ones or, or your cat in my, pos my position. And, and, you know, yeah, you keep up on say, Facebook and Instagram or something, but there's no... There's no substitute for an actual touch point, an actual call. So what I would challenge you to do this week coming up is just take a, a couple minutes, get your phone out, and go through your contact list. And send texts, send at least 15 texts individually to people saying, hey, I was thinking about you. How are you doing? Is there anything I need to pray for? We're doing okay. Would you like to talk? And you do that to 15 people and not your closest people, but the people that are in your contact list, but you see, uh, you know, every so often, every month, every week, uh, that's going to mean a lot to people because people are going to be feeling very isolated. And that's what the church does. We, we are a fellowship. And then on top of that, I would challenge you to this next week, call two people, just outright call two people for no other reason. Say, Hey, I was thinking about you. I hope you're doing well. I just want to chat for a couple of minutes. How you doing? And here's what we're doing. Even if you just leave a voicemail, those touch points are important. People will feel like they're not alone. And they're not. They're never alone if you're, you're a Christian. But the church needs to 
be able to kind of reach out and make sure those connections are there and make sure that people don't you know, spiral down in, in despair or in loneliness. So uh, with that, I'd just like to uh, say a prayer. Dear Lord, uh, we pray that you give us the strength, the wisdom, and most of all, the peace that you only you can give to us through, through your Son, through your Scripture, through the Holy Spirit. You know, give us that peace that passes all understanding, uh, that no matter what happens, what, whatever circumstance we find ourselves, we know that we are in your hands and that our eternal fate is completely settled through the sacrifice and the resurrection of your son. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.